That's you. I'm, ma- I'm making fun of. Th- th- look, we tease each other. It's fun. Just listen to that. I'll let the music play. Right? You get the idea? Notes. Little trills. <laughs> this is what music is. Oh, it's not done. This feels like it. Ah, okay. <sighs> Music. Still hanging in there. Do you think there's going to be a time when human beings are like, mm, n- enough music. We di- we've done all the combinations. Have we calculated that? The combinations of notes? Because once we get through all the good combinations, we're left with the bad combinations. What would that sound like, I wonder? That's what I'm talking about. (laughs) That's what popular music would be. Coming in at number one for the 12th straight week in a row. (laughs) Okay, that's that's starting to make me anxious. We need music, though. We need it in our lives. Because, <laughs> because it, it gives voice to our feelings. Now, that sounds true. But you know what else gives voice to our feelings? Our voices. Where we say, I feel happy. Why don't we do that more? Just say the feelings we're feeling as we're feeling them. I'm frustrated. I remember once I heard a story about a child. This was, okay. Oh, full disclosure. This story came up in therapy. I'm not ashamed. And this person, my therapist, told me this story about a child who was asked, you know, how would you feel if there was never if you could never play with toys again. And the child, must have been about six, something like that, responded very plainly, I would feel mad and sad. Well, I mean, there you fucking go. The fact that this little child included both, that's amazing to me. Because I, if I were that kid, I would have been like, I would feel sad. And then after the person was gone, I'd be like, ah, I wish I'd included mad. Anyway, I'm mad and sad most of the time. I, here's why I'm sad. I get so mad. I get so angry. Smash things in my house. It's satisfying, but... You got to really be committed to smashing stuff because the first one is not going to get it done. The first plate you throw, the first window you break, the first car you wrap around a pole. It's like, okay, I'm getting the taste for this. Do you know who I bet feels great? Fucking Godzilla. To smash a building. To be so angry. Which, which... Let's face it, Godzilla was angry. This guy had issues. Godzilla, no. I'm not saying, I'm not, look, I'm not saying that human beings were flawless in this exchange. But Godzilla had every option to say, I get why you're scared of me. Let's talk. You guys get on the highest hill you can get. So we can be, I love I guess I could have gotten one of those buildings if he hadn't smashed them all. But anyway, just how satisfying that must feel to be angry and then just smash a building. And when they, in later Godzilla iterations, they made it like Godzilla was accidentally smashing the buildings. I like the old school where Godzilla was like, 
I'm gonna fucking smash this building. And then he did. It wasn't like, uh, uh the Urkelization of Godzilla. Uh, did I do that? <laughs> Read my thesis, idiots! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Spontane Nation with Paul F. Tompkins. I am the second part. This is a show where I invite a special guest or guests onto the program to join me in a free forum conversation inspired by a blind question from our previous episode's guest. Then I invite some improviser pals onto the show to join me in a narrative improv that is one continuous story as opposed to unconnected scenes inspired by a location provided by my interview guests. And oftentimes, utilizing the tales gleaned from the aforementioned freeform conversation. And it is all scored on piano by Mr. Eben Schletter. That's what he goes like. Folks, I'm very excited to have these two cutie pies <laughs> sitting here at my podcast table. They are Returning guests, both separately and together. They are the stars and creators of the program Take My Wife, which can be you can download it on iTunes. You can see it on Stars. And in, and in other countries as well. We'll get into it. But you know what else, guys? They're my friends. Please welcome back to Spontaneous Nation, Cameron Esposito and Rhea Butcher. Yay! Hi. Hi. F. Tompkins. That's me. Today, That's you. Today is a banner day. Why anyway, is that? Bruce well, Banner. Great follow up point. <laughs> Not even that kind of great follow up point. <laughs> <laughs> Can't reveal Thank to me that she has not point. eaten yet today. <laughs> That's stuck. very true. Well, I, but I'm having a whole day. When you hear what's happening in my day, oh you'll boy. understand. She's oh experiencing an entire 24 hours today. So, <laughs> You're really unlike the rest it of us, I am I'm having a whole day. Today, I found out that Emilio Estevez is a brother of. Charlie Sheen. Oh, why you just found that She out? didn't know. <laughs> this is the woman I married. A person, she goes, wait, they're brothers, not cousins. I was like, no, they're not cousins at all. I woke up they're actually brothers. They have the same parents. I woke up at 6 a.m. today and <laughs> I put the TV right on. She straight up was put like, put the TV right on. I wanted to have a TV morning. She never wants to have TV I never mornings. Want to watch oh, is that TV. true? It's very yeah, no, true. Never. Oh, I never wants wow. TV mornings. I only watch TV in the evenings. Rhea, are you a TV in the morning person? I mean, I'm a TV in the morning, in the t- TV in the afternoon. TV in the morning, TV in the evening, yep. TV is up our time. I if will TV's TV on the bagel. bagel. I will have TV anytime. <laughs> That's a small TV. That's the end. Is that a small TV? <laughs> that was their that was their slogan. <laughs> Yeah, bagel bites. That was That's a small slug. TV. That's a small TV. <laughs> so, I so you said I'm gonna have a TV morning. Yeah, she did. Put the TV on so early, and I'm just watching a movie. <laughs> watching a movie. She put it on stars. <laughs> I think to prove to herself that we had stars, because someone well, was debating oh, sure. whether we had stars in our sure. own home. Last night. That's right. Well, also the initial movie that was on was. <laughs> What's oh happening? I don't know. I'm just really. She's <laughs> actually <laughs> the yeah. initial movie that was on was some kind of oh, wonderful. Yeah. Sure. Which is a really important movie because. I can't believe Mary Stuart Masterson's not gay in that movie. <laughs> right. She is, I think, maybe, but... It's shocking, and it's tough. Um, Leah Thompson. That movie was a real <laughs> ring of keys moment for me. <laughs> it and was. Then it, that movie went right into this movie. I had taken Murph out, so I had missed... <laughs> it was a movie medley? Like, it seamlessly <laughs> blended into... <laughs> yeah, it was had, a drum Oh, now we're in this movie now. <laughs> yeah. They had perfectly laid them on top of they each other. They crossfaded. We sure. at the same time. It was just a bit of a Star Wars. I went but, you know. outside to take our dog Murph out. When I came back in, a new movie had started, and it was those two fellows. Yeah, it was Charlie Sheen. and Emil- Well, first it was Emilio Estevez, and I was like, I can figure out what movie this is. And I was like, it's Men at Work! And I got it right. <laughs> That's where they are trash collectors. <laughs> they are trash collectors. Who, they, a murder happened? Yep. Okay. Yeah, got it. And they're also it's basically trying to re- start repo a man, but bad. 
Yeah, they're they are. trying to what? Start a sub shop? They're trying to surf start a, a surf shop. Oh, a surf shop. And there's even a scene where they are wearing coveralls. Mm -hmm. They just got done with work. Because it's they're Which wearing their picking their up garbage, garbage collecting coveralls. Then under that, they're wearing a t-shirt. And then mm. under that, I think they're wearing a wetsuit. Well, because they got lunch in their coveralls. Because of sure. course you would, when you're done with your shift at the back of a garbage truck, yeah. you would just go to a restaurant. Yeah. And sit down for a meal, probably. Absolutely. And then right immediately the scene after that is them taking the coveralls off to then go surf with their wetsuits on. So they have been wearing wetsuits under coveralls for the entire work day. So Include, but you forgot the hot. undershirt, which is actually an overshirt to <laughs> sure. the I'm wetsuit. trying to figure out if they're cutting <laughs> weight that part. for some sort of high school wrestling. Like yeah. Martin Lawrence that did that just, time. That just was not... <laughs> part of the movie at all but as a part of their personal life right yeah. uh because i feel like that would be extremely warm very smelly like uh -huh. you got bodily for fluids many reasons mixing with the external anyway the garbage the of it all again. yeah but when Written i saw those and directed by one emilio estevez when i saw those two fellows <laughs> oh, i did not true. i didn't realize that it's true <laughs> me neither when i saw those two fellows on mm -hmm. screen together i said to ria i think they're cousins <laughs> so you you had not thought this before. You were looking at them and thinking they look enough alike. They have they have a passing resemblance to each I other. I seem to remember something from my childhood about them knowing each other. No, <laughs> yeah, they know they know of each other. Maybe they met in this movie. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Well, I mean, and this is just true. In my childhood education of people, I felt like <laughs> I <What>? felt like. <laughs> Are you from Earth? <laughs> this sounds very suspicious. <laughs> I felt like Gloria Estefan. Oh, oh no! Oh boy! Was around at the same time, and I, it was hard for me to remember whether that person was related to Emilio Estevez mm -hmm. as a child or Charlie Sheen, somebody who's wait name when they were children or when you were children. <laughs> when was I a was child. a child. How many children were you? <laughs> when I was a child. I think I thought that relatives probably would have similar beginnings to their name, and that that's how you would know. <laughs> beginnings. <laughs> you thought people were related if they had similar name beginnings. <laughs> yes. Because you, now you're, you were born in medieval times, right? <laughs> Well, maybe also as Esposito, I just looked at those and I said, oh, we're the I'm same I'm their too. sister. I'm sure. probably a part of the family. <laughs> my, my relatives are so successful. <laughs> Gloria and Emilio. <laughs> yes. Sure. And then I saw those two people together. I said, I'm remembering something from my childhood. I think they're cousins. Maria said, incorrect. They are brothers. They are brothers of each other. I said, how much? And I said, full brothers. How much? <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Much. Same mother? I said yes, same mother. I couldn't believe it. But then I saw their face again. I could totally believe it. They Look, I get it. Like. One of them played baseball. One of them played hockey. It's very confusing. <laughs> right. What? <laughs> now, you know that Martin Sheen has a brother named Joe Estevez. What? And here's the thing. <laughs> Charlie looks more like Martin, and Emilio looks more like Joe. So it's the same sort of... <laughs> thing the breakdown happening in two generations what interesting and es estevez is i think emilio looks more like martin personally to you well as time goes by yeah, yes. but when you look at young martin sure. he oh, looks yes. more like young charlie I yes i agree with you there host yeah. of the show I agree. <laughs> yeah well i mean because that's personally because as time goes by so slowly time can do so uh, much uh. <laughs> that's partially that's partially backing up what you're saying. I'm sorry. I'm in a really weird place. I understand. I understand. You did TV in the morning. It's not what you usually do. No. <laughs> Plus, I feel comfortable, safe with friends. Right? So it's good to laugh. It's it a is, safe space. It, Cameron, I couldn't agree more. It's yeah. good to laugh. Now, I have a question for the both of you. Great. This comes to us from our previous episode's guest. And that question is this. If someone wrote a musical about your life, what would it be called and what would it be about? <laughs> I can answer now, that. Remember, My this life. Is, this, is a, yeah, this is a musical <laughs> about your life. What would it be called and what would it be about? 
Do you have an answer? No, you got to go first. I have to reread this to make sure I got it right. If someone wrote a musical about your life, what would it be called and what would it be about? No, I got it. Okay. (laughs) I mean, maybe they mean like... What specific time frame of your life? Well, that's actually a really bad example because it spans a lot of Jean Valjean's life. Incorrect. Restart. Well, like when you go to (laughs) a musical... I hit the thing real quick. (laughs) (laughs) And then now I'm just thinking of other examples. Like, yeah, when you see Fun Home... Again, scratch it. That's like the whole. That's that whole person's life. Okay. What's um, your West Side Story? Okay, go. Yeah, like a snippet of your life. Okay. Well, well I feel like it could be about your whole life, though. Yeah, it could be about the whole. Oh life. yeah, that's why true. reduce it to All a right, snippet. All right, I've got one. Mm, here we go. Mine would be called "Raised Among the Remnants," and it would be about <laughs> spending a lot of time with my mom while she was an assistant manager at Joanne Fabrics at the Summit <laughs> Mall in Akron, Ohio. That's so good. Thank you. Have you thought about this before? <laughs> well, Raised Among the Remnants is a punchline in my current set of jokes. So, okay. Oh, yes. I see. I see. But it works for this thing. Yes. It's, it's a great a title. Really it's a great title. This. It's yeah. a great title. Either that or I left my quip in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. <laughs> I'd go, I'd go oh, with the other. Oh, yeah, I'll go with the first one. <laughs> you mean my toothbrush. Your televi- your tooth- my television. Your television? That is no. a toothbrush. Yeah, what? A toothbrush. <laughs> Everything's a TV to this kid. Fresh. You left your honey. Give me a television. <laughs> you mean coffee, right? <laughs> Rhea, Cameron. What are some of the songs in "Raised Among Why the are... Remnants"? I'm just curious because now I want to hear all of the words that you know about crafts. Um, <laughs> let's see. Who I'm trying to think of words. While uh, you're thinking of that, yeah, Cameron, yeah. what are the song titles <laughs> in your musical? Yeah. All right. I'll. What say. is your? What's the title of your musical? Um, it's called Patch Adams, but it's a different Wait, thing. Hold on. <laughs> oh, come on now. Is that part of the title? Patch Adams, but it's a different thing. <laughs> that has to be the title. That's the title. Okay. <laughs> because. I can see it on the playbill now. Right. <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, when I was a child, I wore an eye patch for a lot of my childhood. Sure. And I feel like it would be about a kid that, like, is constantly scared because they can't see anything ever. <laughs> it's a really terrifying musical. <laughs> right. Um, and the patch is, you know, um, from the t- from the title is the eye patch. But the Adams part, this kid is really into, well, it can go a bunch of different ways. Maybe they're into comics, you know, and then it's like a Scott Adams. Is that that person's name? Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Way to bring the room down. <laughs> Well, I'm sorry. You don't want me to have like a topical, edgy musical. What about Charles Adams? <laughs> yeah, I mean the it Adams family be, already a musical. Are you say, worried about copyright infringement? Well, right. <laughs> yeah, I mean Morticia Adams probably could be in both of these. Like sure. I could see that happening. She just walks through the pa- the background. <laughs> right. That's how musicals are. Um, maybe it's <laughs> maybe it's maybe it's like the Adams are just the, for this kid. All men look the same. Mm-hmm. They're all Adams to her. And that's because she's gay. <laughs> Do they all look like John Adams is played by Paul Giamatti? Yeah, 100%. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm looking around this room here. Or they look How like Paul Giamatti from Sideways. <laughs> those two, those are the two types of men. <laughs> what, what about Paul Giamatti from Billions? Let's get him in there. Yeah, that's a great Let's get point. all the Giamattis. <laughs> all... I mean, when I say Adams, that's what I mean by that. (laughs) I think that's implied. Rhea, got those song titles? Uh, Let's see. I've got uh, uh, Butterick, Buttons, and... uh, What? Shit, what was the third one? I had another three. I I got it. I can't remember the other B. Wow. Uh, Butterick is a pattern company. B-U-T-T? Butterick? Butterick. Pattern company. Okay. It's a pattern company. Okay. Flipping through the pages of my butter. <laughs> That's pretty good. That's you know what I mean? Bad. What about when you, what's that table that they use to measure? That's you mean measuring the table? cutting table? Yeah. Yeah, I with the like little slidey thing that you put the scissors in that no one knows how to use anymore? That Don't seems like an important. Use the end of your, use the end of your scissors, <laughs> not the crotch. I don't know. What the you crotch? <laughs> well... <laughs> Don't use the crotch of the scissors. <laughs> you don't. I felt like the cutting table could just be like somebody's so rude, and you're like, "That's," <laughs> you know. But you're at the table. It's a good. Oh, yeah. It's a good play on words, though, and it could be in the musical. This is where some 
you know, some bad stuff happens, you know, that you're, uh, there's a grave insult that happens at the cutting table. Absolutely. The cutting table. <laughs> the- <laughs> <laughs> it's it's like a good start. Cry. That's a good start. That, that was crying definitely <laughs> the a lot of the crying It was, game. It was 100% the, the crying game. I was listening to that the other day in the shower. Did you hear me? <laughs> I don't think you realize. Did you what hear you me said. listening to that in the shower? <laughs> That's right. I didn't hear you in the shower listening to the crying. Well, I was. Yeah. Were you listening to the movie? <laughs> no, no, the song. Oh, okay. Yeah. You song. don't like TV in the shower. <laughs> <laughs> only in the morning. Nope. At night, and it can and it can't be in the shower tub only. Cam, give me a song title from your musical. Um. <sighs> Oh it's boy. it's <laughs> watch out. Cro- crossed. Cross. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> it's called. This is what it is called. Okay. Cross yourself, and it's about being Catholic. There you go. And then your eyes are your crossed. eyes are crossed exactly. You better church. cross yourself in the church, in the pews. It's, it's not rap. It's what not. About, <laughs> just definitely not. <laughs> I went pretty far with that. No, what it was about, good. What if it's uncross yourself and it's um. about when your religion, your faith changes and also your eyes get better? That's. What if it's two songs? What if it's both songs? Oh my gosh. First act, third act. Really good. It's cross good, yourself in the beginning Paul. and then no one sees that fucking coming at the end. Uncross yourself? No, no. Also, I mean, I don't know if you really know this because we're friends. Like, the last surgery that I had for my eyes was when I was living in Rome, studying theology, went to an audience with the Pope, saw two popes, thought to myself, well, there's never two of that guy. So I knew I needed to go get medical help. And then I had surgery on my eyes. And then I went... I, had, I came here to the U.S. You gotta have surgery. a two pope song. Do yes. you not? Do you not think that you are having a religious vision of that's modern a, times where there now are two popes? That's a great. That's a great point. Uh, no. Or were I you peering also, into the past at the right, Great Schism? Right. right. <laughs> right. No, I was. Um, well, I also was falling down a lot. So. <laughs> Michael Douglas, not related to Martin Sheen. <laughs> No, but you can sort of see it. They're not related. They're not the same. They're not related. Same hairline. They don't have the same name beginnings. Yeah, that's. <laughs> My, they both have an M. Oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> let's talk about Take My Wife and then we'll get Garen a cracker. <laughs> So as of as of well, as people are hearing this, let me tell you some truths. Um, we are recording this in advance, of course, and people are hearing this June eighteenth. June eighteenth. What a fabulous time of year! It's a fabulous time of year. <laughs> um, so you can get "Take My Wife," which is a, a fantastic sitcom. It's about your li- it's a fictionalized version of your lives. It's very funny. It's very touching, um, and it features a, a, you two guys playing uh, versions of yourselves, as well as uh, many fantastic um, people in various uh, supporting roles, um, and. It was on CISO. Then CISO stopped being a thing. Then it got picked up, I want to say, what, a year later? More than a year? Um, yeah. I mean, that's a... Let's see. When did we find out? We found out, like... It was, like, nine months, wasn't it? Yeah. We, we found out maybe in about how it being in May. A- yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> Gestation period, if you will. And it just... And it is May now when we're recording this. Right. So, yeah, you're right. Right around, re- right around a year. Mm-hmm. Um... That it's now available. So yeah. that for a long time it was in limbo. And where could like unbaptized babies? Now where can people find this program? The one pope has said that's not true anymore. Do you? Know I heard. That? I heard they. Which re- is also like. I heard they got I rid of limbo. Wait, a new, the new pope, the current pope, the said, current pope. Yeah, said like honestly, straight up, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny how they can just do that. Yeah, you know, um, it's weird. How yeah, it rolls. What we're really excited about is that. Our show had this really incredible fan support. Like, we found out that it was going to be on iTunes on a Friday mm-hmm. about a month ago. And we didn't know at all prior to that. So we didn't have any time to, like, hustle up literally even a press release We couldn't get a skywriter. We had yeah. no time. <laughs> There's no skywriter. So we just announced on social media that the <laughs> show is now available on iTunes. And um, so many people bought it that it was number one and number two, because there's two seasons, mm-hmm. on iTunes for like two weeks. And then the 
we are not in charge of where the show goes, as you might know from your experience being on television. Sure. Um, and that success, which was all f like fan driven, it's audience driven success. Yeah. Made um, NBC Universal decide to also expand the territories, so now it's available in the UK and Australia. And if it's successful there, we're hoping that uh, the territories expand. It's already available in Canada, so it's really exciting because it is like people actually making the difference in where they can see the the content that they want. So mm -hmm. I, I like thought that was a great lesson. If folks don't know, how do I get more content that I'm into? It's like. It's just ten bucks to buy a season, and you can, you can change <laughs> right like what folks the world are paying you can attention change the to. world absolutely, and it's also on stars. It's streaming on stars on their app because <laughs> we're stars. Right, I knew you'd get there. <laughs> She's there, Cameron Maria. Where can people? F thank you for being here. And where can people find you if they wish to find you, and should you wish to be found? Mm -hmm. Oh well. Both of our socials are like Cameron Esposito and Rhea, and Rhea Butcher. I mean, I was going to say mine, but yeah. sure, take it away. <laughs> but Rhea, you also have a great podcast. I do have a great podcast called Three Swings. Paul, you have been a wonderful guest on that podcast. It was my pleasure to be uh, one. It's very fun. It's just a baseball podcast. But you don't have to be a huge baseball person to listen to it. It's really just me talking about my thoughts and feelings about <laughs> m many things. Also, if you liked us goofing around and me nearly unable to... Me doing a real Jimmy Fallon impression uh, during oh. this entire <laughs> segment, uh, then you might also like our show Put Your Hands Together, which is a stand-up podcast that we both host and that you have also been on. That's correct. And you can see that live every Tuesday at the UCB Theater here in Los Angeles, UCB Franklin. Uh, and Cameron, you have a podcast on Earwolf as well uh, called Query, which is a wonderful show. Oh, thanks. Yeah, it's a, it's about like LGBTQ identity, but it turns out <laughs> anyone can listen. It's true. There's no... <laughs> there's no <laughs> there's, test. There's no orientation wall that you prevents you from hearing the show. You don't have to do anything with butts Build or anything that else. orientation <laughs> wall. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can. You should. You should. I hope, but you a, don't have to. I hope a lot of people are having sex to your podcast. That's, <laughs> that's my dream. That's my dream. As people are <laughs> spilling their guts, pouring their hearts out about uh, their experiences. Yeah, I agree. It's a very affirming show. It's a very affirming show. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to take a break. Ugh, had to swallow. During the break, <laughs> you're going to hear an ad when we come back. We will meet our improvisers. Stay alive. No matter what occurs, I will find you. <laughs> hey, everyone. Paul F. Tompkins. We're here to talk about bed frames. What is your name, sir? Hi, I'm Mondeuse. Mondeuse, do you sleep on a bed? Yeah, I think so. Every night? Would I know if I did? Oh, that's a good question. Well, when you go to sleep, what's it like? I lay down, mm -hmm. and then I don't remember. <laughs> well, when you lay down, what are you laying down upon? Something. Mm. If you had to describe the something, like in the way it feels, how would you describe it? It feels like I'm not awake. <laughs> Mondus, are you avoiding my questions? I have to go to the movies. Mondus, <laughs> you stay right here. I bought a ticket. I know you did. I know which movie you're seeing. It doesn't start for another two hours. I like previews. Mondus. <laughs> I like to see the end before I see the movie. Mondus, mm -hmm. what's the matter? Mm, it's nothing. You can tell me it's an ad. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what beds are. Come on, dudes. The bed is the rectangular thing in your bedroom. Oh, the sleep buddy. <laughs> yes, the sleep buddy. Oh. Now you're sleep buddy. Yeah. Is it on uh, what we call a frame? Mm. Like a wood part? Mm. A wood rectangle. What's wood? Wood is like what trees come from. Oh. I've been in a tree. <laughs> I think I just said that wood is what trees come from. <laughs> Mondus, I'm going to need you to call the hospital. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> back to you, Paul. Oh, welcome back. See, that wasn't so bad. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time to meet our friends from the world of Make Pretends. Sitting, I'm gonna say, right across from me. I <laughs> get them all. The time. <laughs> we have a new person, first time on the show. Welcome to Spontaneous Nation, Chad Westbrook. Oh my God! Hi, Chad. 
Chad, thank you for being here. Oh my God, thanks, thanks so much for having me. Now, Chad, uh, because we you're new to the show, I want to ask where did you, how did you get an improv, and where were you when you got an improv? I'm a, I'm a UCB darling. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> people love me there. Um, I quickly climbed those ranks. Uh, I'm friends. Mono Agapian's been on this show a bunch, right? Yes, Mono is a good friend of mine, um, and I do I do sketch comedy a lot there too. So I'm mm. on Mod Night there, and yeah. Are you from Los Angeles? Uh, I'm from Oregon. So I grew up in anybody's Eugene. anybody's from there. I know. <laughs> no one, honestly. I was in Eugene, Oregon, and no one down here. I've met nobody from my hometown. And I've been here four years. <laughs> if you're from Eugene, if you are from Eugene and yeah. you live in LA, please contact me. Let them know. I need family and friends. And when did you, did you, was, was comedy something you always wanted to do? Did you always know? Yeah. Yeah. I think so. Um, I, I was, um, a mad TV fan uh-huh. growing up. And so that really got me. I, I know maybe there's opinions about it, but Stuart <laughs> is sure. the best character. Played by Michael McDonald. Played by Michael McDonald is the best mm-hmm. Comedy character of all time. And little kid characters. Yes. Very hard to pull off. Very hard to pull off. But very I th- few are successful. I think, yeah, I think it can it can uh, verge into territory that's maybe weird. Absolutely. Absolutely weird. Um, but it really it really spoke to me as a I, child. I yeah. think that Stuart is right up there with um, Gavin, the Bruce McCulloch yes. uh, little kid character yes. from Kids in the Hall. Yes. Um, and the one that Amy Poehler used to do on SNL. <laughs> yeah, the awkward used teen to girl. Her ratio sense. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But when it's done right, it's done right. And it, you're, you, you're preaching to the choir. <laughs> it's the goal, I think, of every comedian, right? Yeah, absolutely. To find we're, a good. We're all just working on our little kid characters. Yeah. <laughs> Some of us get there sooner than others. That's right. And when you land on it, you know you've made it. That's right. So when? So did you have? Because a lot of people that have been on this show, it's a very common story that they didn't go into comedy right away, but they thought they had to try, so like study for another job or another career yes. or something first. What was yours? Uh, well, I went to film school first mm. um, and and then I got into doing like documentaries. So I was a like, production associate and I did like post-production work on documentaries for a long time. Uh-huh. Uh, it's awful. Uh, it's <laughs> There's no other way to say there's it. No, I don't know how to get this across. It's the worst, especially indie. I mean, indie film, I think we all kind of know. Indie projects are so much work. And if yeah. you don't love it, it's like torture. Every, I mean, if you if you have to like really love yeah. indie documentaries. And so post-production, you're not necessarily shooting the documentary. You're not there while it's happening. Yeah. You are Correct. only involved in, here's the raw footage. Right. Here's what, so were you editing? What were you doing? I did like light editing for promo stuff. Like we'd put right. something on Facebook. It'd be like a one minute clip. Of, so you know what I mean? Yeah. I'd, I'd uh, submit to film festivals. I tried to get likes from people. Oh. You know, I had to like, I did like cold call companies and be like can we get like an REI bag that we can auction off or it's just like and every time I call every every time I'd pick up a phone or do anything I'd be like this isn't what you want <laughs> was this still in Oregon yeah this was in Portland and then the when, did, when did you move here uh so I moved here 2013 14 mm-hmm. yeah and I moved for comedy. So right. if I was just like, I started taking improv classes at a theater called the Brody Theater up in Portland. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, you know what? This is my thing. I have to do it. Any regrets? No regrets. All right. Good to hear. <laughs> it doesn't hurt to check. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> uh, okay. Chad, I'm going to look away from you right now. Okay. I'm going to look right next to you. Kitty corner for me. Meow. Meow, meow, per perky every, girl. Every time. <laughs> <laughs> Another first timer. Welcome to the show, Ryan Barton. Hi, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's already got two catchphrases going. Yeah, it's his yeah. first episode. This is unprecedented. Yeah, I did it like my first one. So <laughs> It's nice to mix it up. Yeah. Ryan, I'm going to ask you a lot of the same questions. Um, was it always comedy for you? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, in like a weird, like I also did film. <laughs> Is there an <laughs> echo in here? <laughs> um, I also did film, but I always did comedy. Right. And I got into improv accidentally, like at f- 14. Uh huh. Yeah. My mom, like. Where were you? I was not. Okay. So I was a struggling freshman. <laughs> uh, I was a loser and had like no <laughs> friends. And my mom forced me to go to this audition for a play. Really? Yeah. And I was. 
kicking and screaming the entire way. This is this is high school or, or college? High school, high freshman school. Okay. in high school. And had you done anything like this before? No, okay. I didn't even know what improv what like right. you would watch whose line is it anyway and mm-hmm. you're like this is so fun mm-hmm. um and uh, every song includes the phrase just the other day yeah <laughs> yeah exactly so yeah i auditioned for this thing and and it, the audition was improv itself and i left being like what was that magic in there <laughs> i loved it and then they same day they had like just people go back in for callbacks. I did not get a callback, and so I was like, okay, we should we could probably go home now. And my mom was like, no, we'll stay. And then they announced like the new kids that they added to this troupe, and I was called last. And I was like, oh, and I changed my life. So you rocketed straight to the top. Yeah, is that how that sounds? <laughs> yeah. Um, so I've never looked back, and I am a star. And wh- <laughs> and where was this? This was in Arizona. Okay. So I went I went to Chicago to study film but honestly I was mostly doing improv. Why why did you go to film? Did you feel like I loved it. I did a film camp when I was like in 7th grade and fell in love. Mm-hmm. I still love film to this yeah. day. I moved out here for film, but uh comedy always always has <laughs> won throughout my entire life. <laughs> So here I am just trying to make it in L.A. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you been here now? Um, Six years on Valentine's Day. Oh, happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> hey, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you so much. To have an anniversary on Valentine's Day, it yeah. makes everything so much simpler. It was <laughs> fully planned. <laughs> <laughs> Did you move here with someone or alone? Alone. It was like through... My college had like a semester in LA for like five weeks and it was my last semester and I just like did it. Mm-hmm. And I lived in like a crack house. Like, <laughs> Absolutely. In a bunk bed. Like it, it was like no. super in a closet. Like it was <laughs> truly. In a closet. Tr- I went by, I drove by there the other day. It's like on Hollywood and Highland and it's like fully closed in like a birdcage. <laughs> it's like. What? It's a birdcage. It's like literally It's just that they converted in. it into a birdcage. It's weird, guys. <laughs> guys, if you saw it, you'd know. You'd know. <laughs> If you saw it, you'd know. <laughs> Ryan, I'm going to look across don't the table it. from you. I have to. Don't I'm going to look away from you. You don't have to. Do I it. have to do it. Okay, fine. I'm going to look right next to me. This guy's been here before. And I told him, act like you've been here before. <laughs> and he's doing it. Chris Grace is back. Hi, Paul. I'm just finished in doing a touchdown dance. First time scoring a <laughs> touchdown. They've We've really loosened up the regulations on touchdown dances. They have, yeah. Yeah. It's like, it's fine. Who's it hurting? Yeah. No if one. You're, if you're allowed to kneel and pray, right? That's right. You might as well be allowed to That's, dance. Kneeling and praying is kind of a dance of its own, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> isn't religion <laughs> the ultimate dance? <laughs> Did Bill Maher just walk into the room? (laughs) Now, Chris, if you are very adept at uh, the musical improv, Mm -hmm. if you were to have a musical of your life, what would it be called and what would be a song title? Ooh, The Dumpling Gang. (laughs) Okay. And it's just me eating dumplings throughout my life. (laughs) At various points in your life. Yeah, I'm not putting as much thought into it as Karen. (laughs) (laughs) But now, (laughs) does any other action take place? Or is it just you? Well, there's like interstitial story to get me from one dumpling house to the next. Right. And as the years pass by. Yeah, yeah. Maybe one closes, gets put into a birdcage. And and so what's a song that would be in the Uh, dumpling gang? Well, uh, I would call one, if this was about my life, I'd call putting a peanut in. Which is a true story. When my family, we would make dumplings. My mom would make dumplings. And then one thing that a lot of times in a Chinese household, you'll let the kids sort of uh, wrap them. You know, you uh-huh. uh, construct them. And so you have the little wrapper and you put a little ball of meat and then you wet the corners and then you seal it. And I, on my own, decided to put a peanut into one bat <laughs> of every bat. Right. And I would tell people, like, if you get the one with the peanut, that's good luck. And it turned out like that's a thing other people do have. Like I oh, heard about really? it later, and somehow genetically, I recreated <laughs> a Chinese tradition. <laughs> <laughs> I think I came up with it on my own. Maybe I didn't. It was meant to be. Yeah, it was meant to be. So putting a peanut in. Putting a peanut. Now the dumpling gang. Does the title refer to other people who eat dumplings with you, or a gang of dumplings? Ooh, gang of dumplings. <laughs> I had a feeling. The entire chorus is dumplings. 
<laughs> Do the dumplings sing songs? Yeah, of course. Oh, yeah. I love it. <laughs> Look um, at me, I'm full of cabbage. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very good at musical improv. <laughs> Ryan, Chad, do you guys eat dumplings? Dumplings are the best. All the time. <laughs> <laughs> guys, we have a quorum. Yeah. And dumplings it is. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen. I, oh. I, I was going to say, I detected a theme with the guests today of mm-hmm. this cast, mm-hmm. considering that it's coming out in June, and I think it's that we all love dumplings. I, yeah. yeah. I didn't want to yeah. say, yeah. but you're right. Yeah. That's it's, the obvious it, one. It is dumpling guys, month. it's dumpling month. <laughs> <laughs> Happy dumpling month Happy dumpling to pride. everyone. Folks, we got to take a break. During the break, you will listen to the ad. When we return, we will reveal the location for our improv provided to us by Cameron Esposito or Rio Butcher. And then we're going to do that improv. All this and nothing else when Spontaneous Nation returns to you. To you. Hey, this is Paul F. Tompkins. We're down on the street talking to people about fencing class. Mister, do you take fencing lessons? Uh, Yep. And what's your name? Dodge. Dodge? How long have you taken fencing classes? Uh, 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 Hurry up, Dodge. My, my, my. Time's my, running out, Dodge. Uh, 12 years. 12 years? Mm-hmm. And what fencing belt do you have? Um, uh, f- uh, f- uh, four of them. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, uh. Time's running out, Dodge. Uh, <laughs> Uh, uh, the black one, the blue one, the orange one, and the, uh, the, um, (laughs) Dodge, I'm very sorry, but time has run out. You have failed to answer my fencing questions. Okay. You take me away. Yeah. Where am I going to (laughs) go? We're going to a dark place. Okay. You're cool with that? Well, um, no, but, uh, my hands are tied. Hmm? Literally. (laughs) Yep. Thank you for doing that, by the way. Yeah, and but I can get out of them because fencing class. Oh, oh shit, he did it. <laughs> Dodge, come back! Oh, folks. I told you we'd be back. Stop crying. Folks, we have gotten a location for our improv from Rhea and Cameron, and we are ready to do that improv. But first, just so as you know, In order to aid us in our storytelling, we use three sound effects that move us about in space and time. Let's say we're in a scene, we want to find out something that happened in the past. Someone's having a memory, we're learning how something came to be. Anytime we travel into the past for any reason, we hear this, we use this flashback sound effect. Now, let's say we want to get returned from the flashback back to where we were or go into the future for any reason we use this flash forward sound effect. Now, this final button. It moves us only in space, not in time. Let's say we're in a scene, we wanna find out what's happening at the exact same moment somewhere else. We're just moving in space, not in time. We use this meanwhile button. Past, present, future. Everyone gets it. And just, I haven't said this in a while, but just to remind you, if you're not familiar with the show, <laughs> to remind you if you're not familiar with the show, to go back and listen to this fucking show. <laughs> but also, uh, any of the improvisers can touch these buttons, can activate these sound effects at any time. All right. Now it's time to reveal the location for our improv provided to us by Cameron Esposito and Rhea Butcher. And that location is Akron, Ohio. Akron, Ohio. We take you now to Akron, Ohio. Yeah. Good morning, uh, honey. Good morning. Listen, I um I know we have a busy day today. I know. But I um I thought it could be a TV morning. Yeah. Before we hit those meetings. Yeah, for sure. Let me grab the remote and see. let's see what's on. Okay. <laughs> oh, did you <laughs> Hey, can you stop eating my bagel? Sure. Thank you. Sure thing. <laughs> Okay, I'm just scrolling through here. <laughs> Stars, boring. HBO, boring. <laughs> oh my god, I found it. D2, the Mighty Ducks. <gasps> All right, you kids, I want you to know we got to do some hockey and it's got to be good. Do I put the puck into the net? Oh no, what a ragtag team! <laughs> yes, <laughs> the puck goes in the net. 
Well, what do I wear under this uniform? A wetsuit? What? No, only an idiot would wear a wetsuit I'm so under hot. a uniform. Well, you should be. You got a wetsuit on. Oh, I remember it being better. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but my part's coming up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was, I was, what, 10? You were 10. You were Goldberg, the I was, goalie. I was Goldberg, the goalie. I remember that director was being so mean to me on set. <laughs> Cut, 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 cut. Cutting. What? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> what, what are you doing? What, what do you mean, Mr. G- Gorbachev? <laughs> do you know... Do you know what a goalie's supposed to do in hockey? I, I, I block it, right? I'm putting my hands up. I do my hands up. I put my knees down. No. I stand in the middle between whatever comes my way and whatever's behind me. Okay, every take... You're dropping the stick, and you're just doing the going into this sort of statue pose. That's not what a goalie does. Now I understand these kids are not supposed to be great at hockey at first, right? But eventually, <laughs> they're great at it. Okay, okay. Listen, I got hired because my mom and my dad wrote the script. I know nothing about hockey, sure. But listen, if you do a close up of my face, I can cry on command. You're gonna be wearing a mask. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Honestly, every time you tell it, it still sounds like your fault. Listen, I know, honey. Yeah. Okay, you know what? Let's just switch it. Let's just go to a different movie. Okay. 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 Flip through. Disney Channel, no. <laughs> PBS, no. Oh, a, a Fox movie. Armageddon. What? <laughs> it's on Fox. Not like a Fox movie, but it's on Fox streaming. You want to land here? Uh, uh, yeah, this just sounds good. Well, Welcome back. Uh, I'm Sean Hannity. Uh, Fox presents Movie Night. That's right. We're trying a new thing where uh, you get to see a movie. Well, I, as a liberal, I don't know if th- that... Shut up, you cuck! <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love when the house liberal tries to talk and then we shut him up. <laughs> Okay, so uh, Armageddon. This is a great movie about some regular, everyday working Joes who become uh, stupid astronauts. I hate science and smart people. So you know who to root for. (laughs) You root for the regular guys, and you hate the scientists. But when the regular guys become the scientists, you got to root for them. (laughs) All right, take it away, boys. Armageddon. Wow, what is that meteor? Uh... I gotta get my plumbing gear on. <laughs> well, what you see, what we have to do is you have to take some courses to learn how to be in a rocket ship and then uh, get up. You're there. fucking oh. dumb. Oh, you're right. I'm sorry. Meteor attack the libs. <laughs> Specifically the libs. Save us. I'll think about it. <laughs> I'll, th- I'll, I'll think about it. You have 24 hours. Well, that meteor, it's, it's shortened the time. It gave us 48 hours earlier today. You now have 12 hours. Oh, my God. Save us, regular guys. Oh, come on, meteor. Can I talk you into just extending your fucking flying? <laughs> Go on. Listen, oh, no. Nah. Us Republicans need to get out of here. We've got a big bus, and we're going to head on to the other side of the earth. Hmm. It's going to take us. Time a increase to 13 hours. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. We're working out some deals. Time increase to 14 hours. Listen, you're gorgeous as hell. <laughs> Back down to 12, because <laughs> oh, I know it's a lie. There you go. Armageddon. It's pretty good. we got to take a break. Back with more Armageddon after this commercial for Brain Pills. <laughs> you seem uh, a little sleepy. Yeah. Oh, Did God. you... How did you start your day? I just, my honey and I woke up and I, I said, let's have a TV day, honestly. And I, we haven't done it in so long, but. You started your day with TV? I know. No, I know. I never do that. I like literally never do it. I skipped coffee. I skipped breakfast. I skipped stretching. Can I, would you, excuse me for one second? Absolutely. Okay, guys, you heard mm. him say that, right? Yeah, well, yeah, I heard him say we're that. We're on a deadline here. Yeah, for sure. We've got to convert this building into a birdcage. Yeah. yeah. I mean, when I woke up, I meditated. Yeah. And I did my affirmations. Of course. Yeah. I didn't watch TV. Yeah. Yeah. I said a full rosary. Yeah. 
Yeah. I looked out the window for a while. Absolutely. And I had a cup of coffee. Yeah. What'd I, you do? Yeah, I had a cup of coffee. I read the Sunday funnies from yesterday. Oh, Again. Fun. Yeah. Yeah, fun. So fun. Yeah. The Garfield this week was yeah, incredible. Yeah. Um but yeah, guys. <laughs> incredible. The, yeah, it was incredible. What was what was incredible? <laughs> uh, it's Garfield in bed for three panels, and at the last panel, he wakes up and he goes, Tomorrow is Monday. Wait, what about the other four panels since it's a Sunday? It's gone. They're gone. Whoa. They were, just four blank panels. It, it, <laughs> Jim is Davis died. Oh. oh, no. Yeah, it was a RIP to him. Oh, I wish I'd known. I wouldn't have yeah. had us coming to work today. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. I love that you give us these kind of days off. Well, it's important. I know I Garfield it. means a lot to people, and Jim Davis even more so. Mm. What about when yep. Scott Adams? I mean, that'll be a whole week off, I think. Mm. Let, let me tell I'm you sorry I brought the whole room. No, no, no. Let yeah. me tell you. I'm, I just want to say this. I'm sad now. When Scott Adams dies, you're never going to see me again. Yeah. I'm going to start you. a new life somewhere. <laughs> Hi, sir. Uh, welcome. Welcome to Akron, Ohio. Thank you. I think, uh, I think I'm going to like it here. Uh, <laughs> listen, you seem like a big city kind of guy. and uh, I mean, I was. Yeah. You have an air of mystery. The whole town's been talking about you. Have you they sh- really? You showed up on a Greyhound mm-hmm. with a three-piece Tom Ford suit. That's right. A giant suitcase mm-hmm. full of, I'm sure, could have been major business files from your past. Who's to say? And then you threw that into a fire. I did. Our town fire. Yeah. I went right up to the town fire. You threw your Tom Ford suit and That's your right. big briefcase into the our town fire. too short anyway. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm mad I got tricked by that. <laughs> Tom Ford was selling these suits. <laughs> hey, Jeanette. I'm just wondering what you're going to throw into the town fire tonight. I, like, can't decide. Uh, well, maybe my dress because it's too long. Oh, the yellow one? Yeah. I got fooled into long dresses last year. Where they just trail off and you step on them as you walk. Yeah, that was. I'm so sorry about that. Then definitely the yellow dress. I mean, that was a Balenciaga thing, and I mm-hmm. was like utterly convinced. Yeah, and then I was like, I'm falling down a lot. <laughs> a lot. Yeah. yeah. Starring Michael Douglas. <laughs> Jeanette. Yeah, you're, I love. You're to put the movie I know. Ladies, uh, every ladies, where are your eye patches? Oh, oh, sorry. Sorry. You just, represent we, the school. I put it on real put quick. Put it on real quick. <laughs> I have no death perception. That's better. <sighs> now, what, now. Are we, what are we throwing into the town fire? Yes. Well, I'm throwing my long dress headmistress. Hmm. I like the sound of that. Mm-hmm. And I can't decide between the teapot my mother-in-law gave me, you know, the purple one. Yes, I know it all too well. Or my, um, my guinea pig. Dead, dead, dead guinea pig. <laughs> That's an important distinction. Well, the only yeah. thing I would say is that if you throw a teapot in, it's not going to burn because it's built to withstand heat. For sure. <laughs> Jeanette. That's Jeanette, like I, its main thing. Yeah. <laughs> basically gets heated up all the time. Jeanette, it's more of like a symbol against my mother-in-law. Well, it's just that when the tile on fire dies out, there'll just be a teapot sitting in the middle of it. Mm-hmm. And people will be like, is that a phoenix? Yeah. Excuse me. Born sorry, I'm late. I'm sorry, guys. Oh, sorry. Which Beatrice? Uh, Beatrice. The cab system here is terrible. Oh, my iPad. Oh, my God. I had mistress. I didn't know you were here. I'm always about. <sighs> Pardon me. I, but I, as I was coming up, I, I heard you mention that the town fire might go out one day. Who said such a thing? Well, I mean, I just in the in the same sense that eventually the sun will go out. I'm sorry, but I just what? <laughs> well, eventually the sun will have heat. Where death. did you hear this? Ridiculous! What? Chaos, panic, chaos, chaos and panic. panic! And that was last year. Yeah. Oh, people sure are panicking in this town. Yeah, it just hasn't been the same ever since. The thought of expiration in general, I think, has really p- triggered people. Well, look, I, I just want to start a. I just want to start a new life here in Akron. I just want to, I just want to start over, start fresh. Absolutely. Well, this is a. Is this a place where you can do that? This is a. Oh my God, this is the most refreshing city <gasps> in the world. Oh, is this the businessman I heard about? This is the businessman. He's I, checking into a his former B&B. businessman. Oh. I'm not a businessman anymore. I'm just Sir, me. We need your help. What? Why? We're trying to get LeBron to stay here. LeBron James? Yeah. The Akron. basketball star? Yeah, he was born here in Akron. Where is he right now? He's um, currently in Toronto. Playing for the Raptors? Well, no, playing. <laughs> this tea is really good. Hey, miss? Uh-huh. Can I have another tea, please? 
Also, this city is gorgeous. Toronto's great. Oh, sure. <laughs> Make it fast, though. I've got a game to catch. Well, here, I'll give you some uh, energizing tea. Yeah. And do you have something uh, that'll keep me up? Because the flight is long. Oh, from here back to Akron. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, sure. Mm-hmm. Thank you. I'm going back. They need me. Excuse me, mister. Excuse oh. us. Are you? Excuse us, mister. Excuse us. We're just a couple of kids. Hi, excuse us. Hey, are you, kids. Are you LeBron James? I'm, Le- I'm LeBron James. We recognize James. you from the games. We saw you on TV playing basketball, and my now dad, I see you here. My dad loves you. My dad also loves you. Can I just say you two are absolutely adorable? Great. Oh, thank you. I have an observation about you as well. <laughs> you look like you're escaping something. Running from a yeah. truth? Mr. James, is it okay if I say that you look haunted? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Uh, did you expect to be called out like this at a coffee? <laughs> oh, LeBron, I found you. We gotta go play now. Bye. No, wait. <laughs> don't let those kids go. LeBron. Get back here, coach. Get back here, coach. Wee. LeBron. Wee. We're flying. The rest of the team. The rest of the team has left. What? You're going to have to take these kids and play this basketball game. Just me and these two adorable these, children. Well, you're gonna have to drum up. Well, hold on. Do you have a net? Because they are flat. They are just adorably flying around. Well, this they've field. got great vertical leap. They got <laughs> perfect. Hold on a second. I'm gonna catch up. It's just you. And so LeBron James is due back here today with those kids. Yeah. We're expecting him at any moment. Yeah. And there, there's a big tournament coming up. A, a basketball tournament? Yeah. Is it one of? The- I don't know. It's just a weekend thing. It's, like, it's not like the the championship. Or no, no, no. Like it's that. totally separate. It's this just a just weekend like a, basketball. It's not a affiliated one-off. with the NBA at all. It's a yeah. one-off championship. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Some rich man put it together. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. I, I appreciate the NBA, but I prefer to have my own competition. Your own competition has yeah. never been done on oh, my ass. I'm so yeah, absolutely. In a way, yeah. very ideal. Tell us more. Well, um, we of course we've seen competitions and tournaments at the collegiate level. Yes, yeah. Yes, 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 yes. What about the tournament at the? <laughs> <laughs> Are you all right? You're choking on your energizing oh, tea. Do you want to spit out your chicken? <laughs> I never spit out my chicken. That's but it's a, it's a bone, sir. There is always a bit of chicken in my mouth. <laughs> That's supposed to be good luck. Oh yes. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, a tournament, a tournament of basketball. A basketball with only the most professional teams of adults. Only the most professional teams. Yes, yes. Mm. And no children. Yes, yeah, no, no children. Obviously. But but that's more of a spoken rule, not a written yeah, one. Right. So that can't come back to bite us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No need to write that down. No, we'll on, remember on the company intranet. <laughs> <laughs> huh. Okay, so they didn't write it down in the rule book that kids can't play in this tournament. That's most of the rules in Akron. It's just kind of, we know, you know? Right, Someone right. said something once and we remember it. I think that's why I was drawn to this town. Yeah. Hey, hey guys. Oh. Sorry, I'm late. Who, it's me, this? LeBron. <laughs> oh, LeBron yeah. James. Take off both your eye oh, patches. LeBron, I didn't recognize you till you spoke. Yeah, you're hold so, on one second. You're so undistinctive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Hey, guys, guys. Guys, I'm here for the tournament. You are going to play in the tournament. Oh, and do you have the Akron. rest of the Cavaliers, like the, all the adult professional players that Here's you normally play thing. with? Here's the thing. I don't. What? What? How? Is the two adorable, adorable little children Hi. in Toronto. Hi there. What? Hi. It's, but Hi. you need five people. <laughs> yeah, here's the thing. <laughs> we ran some plays on the plane. I think they're fully ready. You ran full basketball plays it's on a, a big. Pl- I. It's a huge plane. It's a private plane. <sighs> It's a big ass private plane. Hey, what? whoa! Like, hey, that's not how we out. talk in Akron. <laughs> <laughs> I can fly. I can do whatever I want. I can fly too. <laughs> that's just wee 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 wee. Honestly, you might not be about it now, but you will be. You just take a plane ride with these no, two. No, well, I'm certainly not about it now. <laughs> you were coming back, wee. <laughs> well, they do seem like enthusiastic kids. 
Also, they can fly. That's got to be worth something no, in this game. The, also, the like, enthusiasm is what I noticed. <laughs> right, right. Not the flying. You didn't notice that we were flying I children. noticed it, but I was like, you know what's really distinctive about these kids? Their enthusiasm. I was more, tra- I was definitely struck by their flying abilities. Mm, I haven't well, seen that before. We're orphans. This guy gets it. That's right. We're orphans. <laughs> flying orphans. Well, the, the team's also going to need a manager, and that's why we were hoping you would help. Oh, them. me? That would well, be fantastic. You, yeah, don't you know business? Manage the team? <laughs> Business files. Yes, I know business. I'm great at it. I, I had a, I had my own company. I, I transformed buildings into birdhouses. <laughs> oh, that sounds perfect for background. We could lock these children in them. <laughs> the flying children. I, I the, guess that's right. The birds of Akron. Yeah. More like Finally. a bird cage than a house. Did I say bird house? Yes, you did. I think I meant bird Which cage, but it's not as impressive because you just any building could be a bird house. I mean, yeah, there were, yeah, they just look like regular houses, and there were a bunch of birds in there. Just cut a circular <laughs> hole in yeah. them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of times we'd fill it in with glass, so it just looked like a big fancy window. Mm. All right, I feel like maybe this is all fate. Maybe this is what I'm supposed to be doing yeah. here in Akron. Yeah. Well, okay, I'm in. Uh, what oh, time great. is the tournament? Hey, kids. Yeah? Uh, sir? What is it, sir? It's, there's five seconds left what? in the game, all right? Yeah. It's, been, it's been a heck of a game. <laughs> I'm sweating my little forehead off. <laughs> I'm on my third pair of shorts. <laughs> I just, I just want to say, because no matter what happened, you played a great game. Thank and at the you. end of this, if we win, I'm going to adopt you, too. <gasps> It's finally coming true. We have a two-point lead. The odds are in our favor. There's no way we can fail. Nothing could go wrong. Let's get cocky about it. Okay, I think we're better than everyone. I'm basically a god. Yeah, you'll never beat us, Philadelphia 76ers. All right, so we lost. (laughs) That was surprising. (laughs) I took the ball and I threw it in the garbage. Yeah. And I thought, no one can play better than I can, so I'll just end the game right now. And then I really thought the symbolism of that would cause the other team to forfeit. (laughs) Right, but it... Instead of really backfiring. Well, all right, kids. I guess we're, it's game's over, so put you back in the cage. <laughs> yeah, sorry, kids. You got to get back in the uh, sorry, guys. in the bird cage. Unfortunately, that's true. We have to lock you up. Can I um, can I be honest with you guys? I, I feel yeah. like I did a terrible job managing. <laughs> I you know well, I, we had so much faith because you were the big city guy and you 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 promised us you know good business. Yeah, I did. I did. You promised that. I promised you good business and. What I gave you was bad business. <laughs> you know, while he's while he's saying, I, I feel like I also did a bad job out there on the court. No, look yeah. on, no, Coach no, LeBron. no, no, I did, I did. You saw me out there. Well, I was a, I was a sloppy, sloppy mess. You did, you fell down a lot. But can I say, LeBron, you, you look haunted. Yeah. Yeah, I've just been carrying around this truth for a while. <laughs> <laughs> what, what is it? You just keep alluding to it, and you're. Just Your eyes are out, so it's real. Wait right. a minute. I think I know what it is. <laughs> Go ahead. You killed Scott Adams. Is this true? LeBron James? Did you kill Scott Adams, the creator of Dilbert? Accidentally. Accidentally on when you purpose. Were... What's the difference? He's dead. Hey, it was an accident. And now I got to go. No, what? no, I'm leaving you with that. I really got to go, guys. But you're a what? murderer. I, hey, T. Oh, can I get a timeout? No, you can't no, no, time no. out a I, court case. No, this, this is not. <laughs> this, this is a court. This, this public <laughs> pavilion <laughs> is our court. That's yeah. how Akron works. Okay. Didn't you see the kangaroo on our shield? I, I did. I, okay. All right. Well, then time back in. All right. well, you not, don't say that either. Just timeouts just run out and the game starts. Guys, I've been on the I've been on the court for so long. I forget how these things are done. I just I'm sorry. Okay, you accidentally killed Scott Adams. I accidentally killed him. It wasn't fully my fault. I was thinking about what to do uh, in Toronto. Uh huh. I came back for you guys. Right. Right. Just <sighs> write my latest, Dilbert. Send out a few tweets about how... Oh, here, sir. Here's that tea you wanted. Uh, oh, thank you very much. Energizing. Is there uh, any discount for cartoonists? Oh, sure. Oh, yeah. okay, you great. Bill, Bill Watterson was just here last week. <laughs> that cuck? All right. <laughs> oh, what? 
Oh, sir, we don't use that kind of language here. Oh, well, uh, you just heard it. I use my I use that kind of language here. Oh. Anyway, here's your tea. Thank you very much. I feel energized already. Hey guys, it's uh, me, LeBron. I was le- I left a tea here. Wow, I left LeBron, a geez. energizing tea. I'm just done um, getting a fun a funzy written on me a Sunday funny written about me uh, down the hall oh no you left that tea that uh, on your table a Sunday funzy a Sunday, a Sunday funzy <laughs> let me get this straight you're getting a Sunday funzy written about you yeah. down the hall yes yes and I came in here because I was like just checking out this place I had a break and I left my tea here that was for me well let me tell you something you rich spoiled playboy millionaire sports guy I rented out this tea shop for a private tea experience, and I appreciate you knocking when you came in, mm-hmm. but this is my time, okay? You need to stop there because I'm getting angry. Oh, really? I'm getting stop. Well, I'm okay. getting. Oh, you're getting angry? Just, just be careful. Are you triggered, I'm, Snowflake? <laughs> careful around that art piece that's made of razor blades. What is this? I might put, put my fist through it. <laughs> oh, no, I accidentally <laughs> put my fist through it. <laughs> Uh, Scott, uh, he's dying. Blood is shooting up through my neck like a, a necktie curling upwards at the end. Got, uh, <laughs> I got to get out of here. This was your fault, LeBron James. Okay. Yeah. Sounds like it could have happened to anyone, LeBron. Thank you for fully getting that. I think it does. You call, you call it accidental? This is You punched an art piece. Thank you. Shards of blades shot right through Scott Adams' dumb neck. Yeah, yeah, that's how it went. Okay. So, anyway. It sounds like an accident. It was a full accident. And I can I go now? Well, I mean, it's your guys' court. Uh, you decide. Well, we have to consult the jury here at the public pavilion court. And I don't know. Yeah, thinking? the jury is always the young, the youngest people in the pavilion. Oh, no. yeah, I, mean, I like LeBron James. Yeah. I think we should let him go. He's fun too. He's I think cool. we should let him go. He's so tall. He shows up in movies I like. Yeah, yeah it's fun. Yeah, he's got a he's got a good acting career going. Well, on. we we could do a vote, but I, I pretty much read the room, LeBron. It seems like you're free. Thank you, kids. Can you carry me off? Of course we can. Grab on tight. Can I tight? Here we go. Oh, they're flying away. Into the sunset. Well, there he goes. LeBron James, the man who accidentally killed Scott Adams. And here I am in Akron. My new life already turned to shit. What do I do now? Yeah, yes, come in. Hi. The gymnasium's open. <laughs> Hi, I'm sorry. I just... I wandered in because I'm a lonely woman looking for a lover. Oh, how about me? Okay. <laughs> and it all happened in a place called Spontaneous Nation. <laughs> Ryan Barton, where can people find you? What do you want to promote? It is June 18th. Uh, um, uh, great. Uh, <laughs> I'm glad it yeah, is. Yeah, I'm super happy. <laughs> um, on my social media, Rybrator, super fun across the board. Uh, I perform on Herald Night, Dollhouse every week. Uh, I have a fun web series coming out. What's it called? Called We're Gonna Murder My Boyfriend. <laughs> it, <laughs> it should absolutely be out by this time. Um, it's, about, it's about a drag queen. Hiring some friends to kill her boyfriend. Very fun. Oh, uh, I think this will be announced. Uh, oh, UCB. Oh, oh. oh, yes. Yes. UCB, UC, Ever Since the Game, has its own version of RuPaul's Drag Race called right, UCB yes. Drag Race. Yes, yes, yes. They've done four to five seasons, yeah. and they just released what this season's going to be, and it's UCB Drag Race All Stars. Oh. And yours truly and Chad Westbrook. Are asked, we're asked to come back. Yeah. You, so you, you're the all stars. We're, we're gonna be all stars on it, this and is we are excited. so excited. Yeah. And we were also, it is going to be a six month run. Yeah. Wow, <laughs> so is it really? If we make it to Holy finals, Holy moly! If we make it to finals, we'll be, have been doing this for half a year. Yeah. <laughs> Now, is this a scoop? Am I getting a scoop yeah, here? No one, this is, you this are. This is the announcement. This is yeah, the first, this is very The exciting. email yes. just went out yesterday. yesterday. So yeah. This okay. is very, oh, so sorry. They have it. 
<laughs> they haven't well, I mean, to, released to it yet. So, yes. 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 so we don't even yeah, know you're who's going to be scoop that. that everyone found out about yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Congrats. Yeah. Uh, fantastic. Chad Westbrook, same things. Uh, yeah, I'm at Chad Westbrook everywhere. Follow me, likes for likes. And um, I also have a... <laughs> what a scam. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I also have a podcast. Uh, it's called uh, How Is She, Though? And we talk about RuPaul's Drag Race. We uh-huh. recap that. And we also talk about queer culture. Um uh, yeah, like that. Go listen to that. That's amazing. And I want to plug, um, I'm in a really great web series as well called The Filth that will be coming out. Um, it'll be later this year, I think September. All keep right. your eyes out for The Filth. There we go. Thank you. And Chris Grace. Hey, I'm at Chris Grace. Uh, and uh, I started a podcast about basketball Woo! called Rule of Threes. Uh, three pointers is the reference. Oh, oh. oh I get it. I get it. <laughs> yeah. uh, but I wanted to plug... Uh, June, I think 25th, July 9th, and July 16th, uh, our friend Zach Reno mm-hmm. oh. wrote a musical that's a parody of Harry Potter, and I am producing it. Oh, wow. And we're taking it to Scotland this year. To the Edinburgh Fringe yep. Festival. That's right. Cool. Fantastic. Uh, I am now like a big wig. Yeah. And what, and what is the name of the show? It's called Voldemort and the Teenage Hogwarts Musical Parody. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so it's three shows in, in LA at UCB Sunset. And then we'll be in uh, Edinburgh all the month of August. Please Fantastic. Come see it. Yep. I always, from the moment that the, the Sunset Theater opened, I thought it would be that stage would be a great place to do like a full on production. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I'm so, I'm glad that this is exciting. And this will be see. Broadway level. Yeah. When you say full on production, that's what I mean. Yeah. yeah. I mean, a full on <laughs> an FOP. <laughs> yeah. This now, is going to be as good as Raised by the Remnants. Chris, I have. <laughs> <laughs> I have a, a, a gift for you. Oh. When I, att- I I can't remember if we talked about this when you were on the show last, but I attended your wedding. Yes. And at one point. Update my- still going. Update still still married. I have not had to apologize to anybody for <laughs> getting divorced. <laughs> but um, at one point when my wife and I were getting ready to leave, uh, it was raining and I had brought an umbrella. And oh. I couldn't find my umbrella anywhere. <laughs> and then it turned out that you guys were having pictures taken under this umbrella. Uh-huh. That somebody had just grabbed it. And I was like, oh, I can't I can't leave now. That was your <laughs> that umbrella. Was my umbrella. So my wife and I would like to give you guys this umbrella oh. from the from the Davek Umbrella Company. Wow. They are not wow. a sponsor. They just make damn good umbrellas. Thank you so much. <laughs> While we were we were taking these photos, which turned out incredibly, they're beautiful pictures. Um, the photographer's assistant was like, "You guys, the person who they, they want to leave, they need the umbrella back." Like they were pressuring us to be like, "Hurry up and take those." They, they they really gotta go. They keep asking for their. I don't know if that's true, but there was this, no, this pressure. Of like, it was great. There was pressure on both sides because then the photographers were like, "Just give us, just give us one more, just." Give us one more minute <laughs> and we had said goodbye to everyone it was that awkward thing of like we'll see you guys bye and then we're still hanging around I and will so- <laughs> I will tweet out this photo because they came out wonderfully they, they're incredible photos and that everyone can know that it's your umbrella there you in go. these photos and it was it was worth the wait it was worth the wait to see these beautiful pictures um, Evan Schletter he is Evan Schletter on all the things Go to ebbetschletter.com and check out Ebbet Schletter's non-spontaneous work because Ebbet Schletter is only the best. Check out Little Big Awesome on Amazon the TV Place uh, because Evan did, did the music for that. Um, and Stand Against Evil, which I think will be, you're working on now probably, and it'll be coming out in the fall. I think every October it usually comes out, right? Halloween? Uh, Stand Against Evil. Uh, Evan does the music for that, um, which stars our friend, little Janet Varney. So do check out that when it is time. Catch up on the previous seasons now so you can be ready, okay? I'm trying to help you. Mm-hmm. Oh! If you're wondering how to look up Evan Schletter, it's very simple. You spell his name like this. <laughs> E-B-A-N-S-C-H-L-E-T-T-E-R. As for me, go to paulftompkins.com slash live and see if I'm going to be anywhere near you. Um, some things that are coming up, we're going to be headlining. Spontaneous Nation will be headlining the Philadelphia We the People Improv Festival, the first ever um, improv festival in Philadelphia, I, if it's by that name. It, it, if there was another one and it's not happening anymore, but don't yell at me. <laughs> I, I put words in the wrong order, okay? I, I love you. So uh, check it out. We should have tickets available for that. Also, this is very exciting. Starting tomorrow, um, 
my friends from the cast of uh, Bajillion Dollar Properties, we will be doing shows at improv shows at UCB Franklin on the third Tuesday of every month for the next six months. Uh, the Bajillionaires uh, shows are 9.30 p.m. at UCB Franklin. Do come out and see us all together because we have a good time making you have a good time. That's our motto. And we all got tattoos like the Lord of the Rings cast. Ladies and gentlemen, folks of all persuasions, thank you for joining us. Thank you to Earwolf for hosting the podcast. Thank you to Engineer Ryan for engineering us all the way to the end of the show, which this is. Goodbye forever. Until next week, this is Paul F. Tompkins saying, Semper in presenti. Presenti.